If people really knew what playful pedagogy was, it could help them rediscover joy in education. Play has fostered in me a flexible and creative mindset and guided me to create my own personalized approach to teaching. We should start by examining our assumptions about what leads to significant learning. These assumptions provide a deep structure and a set of beliefs that influence our actions. But when we compare our implicit assumptions to our pedagogical decisions, is there congruence or hypocrisy? Sometimes what we say we want and believe in is not always well reflected in our actions and habits. We say we're student-centered, but our practices establish hierarchy and control. We say we want to engage students and develop critical thinking, yet the traditional approaches to teaching like favoring lecture and multiple choice exams more likely create disengagement, disinterest, and a culture where learning is a chore. We ask students to be creative, take risks, and demonstrate flexible thinking. But our assignments are often confining, prescriptive, and graded on a rubric. We say we value equity and inclusion, yet our current education and grading systems are biased and have traditionally disadvantaged marginalized learners. This form of education may have been useful at one time, but the times have changed. The economy has changed. What the world needs now is dynamic and creative thinkers. So might it be time for an educational reform? There's not just one solution to this problem, but I found that play is an exciting and untapped resource that's helped me solve some of my biggest issues with academia and adult learning. The problem is play is often considered trivial and a waste of time. So when suggested as a pedagogical approach for adult learners, it's often not taken seriously or it's viewed as reckless. But here's the thing. Play is more complex than we give it credit for. Play can be silly, frivolous, and something kids do, but play is also an essential and useful tool for adults. Play can be serious at times too. Play can waste time, but it can also paradoxically save time. A little time spent on play can accelerate learning because you've changed the student's association to learning. But play is more than a magic trick to engage students. Play prepares students to be adaptive, creative, and innovative in their careers. We don't need more mindless graduates who can ace exams. We need students who have the ability to break out of outdated systems and mindsets to help solve some of our greatest social, economic, and political problems. Play can have extraordinary purpose and power, but only if you believe in it and understand the powerful process it ignites. My study on students' experiences of playful pedagogy highlighted a powerful learning process when play was used as a foundation to the course. Students said with play, there's laughter, joy, fun, novelty. When the students experienced those things, they felt a sense of relational safety in a warm classroom environment. At the same time, they said play removed barriers to learning. It reduced their anxiety and stress. Once they felt safe, connected, and relaxed, it awakened motivation to learn. All of this seemed to contribute to and encourage an open and engaged learning stance, which made learning more meaningful, personal, and memorable. Perhaps another convincing perspective can come from brain science, and the reminder that the brain is the organ that drives all learning through a process called neuroplasticity. Certain neurotransmitters are responsible for supporting neuroplasticity by increasing motivation, attention, memory, urgency, excitement, and concentration. If we can understand the importance of these neurotransmitters in learning, and if we know what types of experiences can release more of these neurotransmitters in students' brains, we can better design our learning space and mode of education to support that process. Brain science suggests several emotions and conditions that may increase the presence of these positive neurotransmitters. Novelty, fun, play, humor, safety, motivation, excitement, trust. But if you think about a traditional classroom in higher education, does it typically generate novelty, social connection, fun, engagement, humor, creativity, curiosity? Not that I've seen. But what if we redesigned our pedagogy to create more of these conditions and emotions in the classroom? You can probably already see the reasoning for playful pedagogy. 
Play is the key that fosters the right kind of environment that centers students for deep and meaningful learning. Play is dynamic and complex. It's not just silly and fun activities to get people laughing. It can be an activity used to harness the power of play to establish connection, trust, and motivation to unlock a powerful learning process. Other times, play is a way of being. It means being professionally playful and simply not taking ourselves too seriously. When we can reduce hierarchy and threat, students find a sense of belonging and a belief in themselves. Play as a way of being allows us to be creative, professionally vulnerable, and willing to take risks. In that case, we can serve as a model to the very things we expect from students. And even other times, play can be an underlying philosophy that keeps our mind flexible and alert to harmful or outdated status quo. This philosophy will allow us to intentionally challenge what is to consider what if. Because students in society are ever evolving, so our approaches to education should be too. Playful pedagogy can be so many things. It will look different for each of us. I conceptualize playful pedagogy on many levels. At the core, it's about embodying a belief in play. This way of being allows us to be open and exude joy for the work we do, which communicates passion and congruence. We can spend a little time on play for the purpose of fun and joy, to connect people, lower their defenses, to ignite important neurotransmitters. Icebreakers, or connection formers, are a small yet mighty investment that seeds a valuable learning process. Play can be designed into the course as activities that engage students with the content in active ways. Broadly speaking, playful pedagogy is about finding novel and creative ways to get students to actually think about and engage with what they're learning instead of being a passive or resistant recipient to an obligatory education. And play can be extremely sophisticated and complex when it extends beyond icebreakers or singular activities. You can design your entire course with the premise of thematic play. There's actually a law course in Denver that's based entirely on the book Jurassic Park, where lawyers in training work in legal teams to design and draft laws and policies protecting extinct dinosaur parks. No matter your style, play's invitation is simple. Play with ideas, play with teaching norms, play with your own limits. Embrace the ambiguity and openness of play. Inspire your students to play with meaning and understanding. Reach out and connect with the people around you as playmates and share the connection. Most of all, bring joy back to teaching, inspire wonder and learning, and don't forget to just have a little fun.